This week in Hacker News, malware dropped in Amazon orders, caribous drink coffee, hacking the Air Force and NASA, Uber gets fined, yay! DDoSers get the boot, and babies get kidnapped via a baby monitor. This coming up right now. Woo! All right. So what's been going on this week in hacking news? Well, the first story we have here that I picked up is malware dropped in fake Amazon order confirmations. Eh, it's kind of lame, but you know, it happens. Might want to tell your mom, your grandma, beware of those Amazon orders. Basically, Edgewave, an email security company, has recently discovered a new mal spam campaign. Attackers are basically using an Amazon order confirmation email and are apparently sending very convincing emails. Yeah, I really doubt that. Um, some of the subject lines they're using is your Amazon.com order, Amazon order details, and your order with some crazy numbers as if it was a order number and with the text that has shipped. Now, obviously, most of us are not going to fall prey to this, but... Apparently, some people are. Anyways, when the recipient opens the email, they're greeted with an Amazon-themed confirmation email, which at first glance is very convincing. Again, I doubt this. Anyways, the email would have been sent to a long contact list. That's right. They just put a bunch of people in the two field and send it to a whole bunch of people. That's so stupid. Ah, anyways... Stupid people. Um, the order confirmation has, guess what? No details about what was ordered. Shocking. And not only that, it only provides you with an order number and the cost of the item. Um, as well as this, emails are saying that their order has been shipped. However, the email does not provide a tracking number. Again, shocking. Um, let's see. But what the order senders have done is include an order details button. Okay. Once this button is clicked, it will download a word document named orders underscore details dot doc. Cause you know, that's very normal practice for clicking a link. It downloads a word document so you can review your order. Not but anyways, if the user clicks on this, enables content, the document will automatically enable its macros, trigger a PowerShell command that downloads and executes, guess what, a widely known Trojan named Emotet, E-M-O-T-E-T, -E -E I don't know how you say it, onto the victim's device. Hide your kids, hide your wife, tell your grandma, tell your mom, beware of this stupid attack. All right, moving on next. Caribou Coffee reports a data breach including payment information at 265 stores. I've never heard of these guys, but apparently they're all over the place. American coffee seller Caribou Coffee recently suffered a breach exposing customers' payment data at 265 U.S. stores for roughly three months, according to a notice posted to the company's website. The retailer says an outsider has unauthorized access to point of sale systems at affected locations between August 28th and December 3rd. So if you were drinking some caribou coffee between that time, you might want to check your bank statements. Hackers may have access customer names, payment card numbers, expiration dates, and dun, 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 security codes. The company says payments made through its rewards program were not affected. I guess there's one silver lining there. Um, they're working with the FBI, which is conducting an ongoing review. Caribou also is notifying customers about the breach via email. So check those inboxes. Uh, the notice urges customers to check if they have visited any affected stores and review payment card statements and credit reports. Dun, dun, dun. Would you like to get a free copy of my brand new, never before seen Python 3 ethical hacking course on cyber surveillance tools? In this course, I have over four hours of content where I show you how to monitor all keystrokes, how to capture clipboard data, how to record the microphone, and how to log all monitor screenshots in both Windows and Linux using Python 3. If you want to get a free copy of this course, go ahead and leave a comment saying that you would like a copy, and I'll select 10 random people from the comments to get a free copy of my brand new course. 
All right, moving on. Next in the news, Hack the Air Force Bug Hunting Challenge uncovers 120 flaws in websites and services. That's right. The Air Force had 120 flaws in their websites and services. A bug bounty challenge, bounty, bounty, a bug bounty challenge, which asked hackers to hack the Air Force, has resulted in 120 vulnerabilities being found and fixed, at a cost of 130,000 big ones being paid out to participants. Woo! The program, organized by the U.S. Department of Defense (DoD) and bug bounty company Hacker One focused on public facing Air Force websites and services from October 19th to November 22nd this year. Nearly 30 participating hackers submitted over 120 vulnerabilities throughout the month long program and the US Air Force awarded them over $130,000. Quote, it's critical to allow these researchers to uncover vulnerabilities in Air Force websites and systems, which ultimately strengthens our cybersecurity posture and decreases our vulnerability surface area, explained Captain James J.T. Thomas, Air Force Digital Service. And I would say he is correct. Bug bounties are good. Let's secure our shit. Moving on in today's hacker news. NASA hack. U.S. Space Agency warns data potentially stolen in new cyber breach. U.S. Space Agency NASA has discovered a potentially, or rather a potential data breach on undisclosed computer servers that may have exposed the PII details of some employees. Not good, NASA. NASA Assistant Chief Bob Gibbs confirmed in an internal memo sent Tuesday that an investigation into the incident started on October 23rd. One targeted system was reportedly hosting personal identifiable information and is believed social security numbers of staffers may have been compromised. I don't know. Does NASA employees get paid? Well, they probably get paid well, so you better check their credit report in the memo gibbs wrote nasa cybersecurity personnel took immediate action to secure the servers and the data contained within nasa and its federal cybersecurity partners are continuing to examine the service to determine the scope of the potential data exfiltration and identify potentially affected individuals there's a whole lot of potential here not sure what's going on he warned the process will take time while the full scope of the potential breach remained unclear at the time of writing, the agency noted it likely involved data from between July 2006, that's right, between July 2006 and October 2018. Yes, 12 years. That's what that's saying, 12 years. NASA bosses stress it is not believed that any agency missions were jeopardized by the cyber incidents. That's right, incidents. Plural. All right, so moving on. Uber gets a $459,000 French fine over data breaches and 2016 hack. Uber Technologies Inc. was slapped with a 400,000 euro fine by France's privacy watchdog following a 2016 cyber attack that compromised the data of millions and millions of customers and tens of thousands of of drivers. It's the third European penalty over the same breach, Francis CNIL said, adding that it was publishing its decision due to the very high number of people concerned and the need to make other operators aware. The Paris based watchdog accused Uber's French unit. Okay, enough of that. Moving on. FBI kicks off some of the worst DDoS for hire sites off the internet. The FBI has seized the domains of 15 high-profile distributed denial-of-service websites after a coordinated effort by law enforcement and service tech companies. Several seizures warranted granted by a California federal judge went into effect Thursday, removing several of these booter or stressor sites off the internet as part of a coordinated law enforcement action taken against illegal DDoS for hire services. The orders were granted under federal seizure laws and the domains were replaced with a federal notice. Prosecutors have charged three men, Matthew Gutrell and Juan Martinez in California 
and David Bukowski in Alaska with operating the sites according to affidavits filed in three U.S. federal courts, which were unsealed Thursday. Some of the sites named in the incidents indictments reported attacks exceeded 40 gigabits per second, large enough to knock off some websites for a period of time. Specifically in the complaint, the Justice Department accused downthem.com, I think it is, had more than 2,000 customer subscriptions and had been used to carry out over 200,000 attacks. Bye-bye, guys. And finally, to wrap up this week in Hacker News, baby monitor hack leads to kidnap scare for Texas couple. A Texas couple got a terrible scare when they heard a strange man's voice on one of their baby monitors threatening to kidnap the newborn son. Scary. The family said they have a network of Nest cameras set up in their home. On one recent night, something strange happened. They heard the system beeping and then a man's voice saying sexual expletives. Oh, that's not good. Apparently in the baby's room. So we throw on the light in our room. He turned the camera on and said, turn off the light. And then said, I'm going to kidnap your baby. I'm in your baby's room, Ellen Brigney said. The couple raced to the room, found their child safe, and no one else there. That's when they realized someone hacked into their Wi-Fi network. They have since gotten rid of the Wi-Fi cameras and switched to an offline closed circuit system. So if somebody hacked into their Wi-Fi network, why didn't they go run around the house? But anyways, that's going to do it for this week in Hacker News. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, go ahead, click that subscribe button and tap that bell. And remember, I will see you on the other side.